teach we are to find. So where you lead me, I will go. Touch my lips by your strength, I will go. I will go. of grace tonight. Eternal Father, creator of the universe, Lord, we glorify your name, we magnify your name, and we uplift your name because you're worthy to be praised. Lord, tonight we acknowledge we have sinned, and we ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you have mercy upon us. Forgive us for our sin. And strengthen us, dear Lord, by your grace to be obedient to you. And Lord, as we gather here tonight to learn once again from you, we ask that you will open our understanding. Give us wisdom so, dear Lord, when we get truth, we will put it into practice. Lord, I pray that you bless every head that is bowing presently under the Green and White Ten University, right here at Progress Park. At this time, the Lord represents the man's servant, the one who has been speaking truth to us, naked truth. Lord, we ask that you give him a special blessing tonight, and as he brings forth your word with power and authority, everyone, even the children among us, will obey. So Lord, we commit him into your care and keeping. We ask that you will cover him with the blood of Jesus Christ. And Lord, as you speak to him, let your word go forth with power and authority. Continue to tabernacle here with us. We invite the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the spirit of love, peace, togetherness, understanding. And as we cooperate with you, we know that all will be well with us. This is our prayer. 
through His Son, Jesus Christ.
Uh, the message for tonight is captioned, If you can't love me now, don't love me later. <laughs> you hear me? Oh, yes. If you can't love me now, don't love me later. All right. Now, now ladies are very special. Any lady in the house? But some things, one of the things about ladies is ladies could cut real style when they're ready. True, true. Uh, Pastor Paul? Oh, yes, oh, yes. Uh, that's true. Uh -huh. Sometimes the ladies behave in a kind of stooch way sometimes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Like to cut style yeah. on the men. Mm -hmm. Especially when you know you're nice and the man, and he's checking for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, making the poor man see real trouble. Mm -hmm. We're following you. Lord have mercy. Yes, sir. Huh? Make it hard for the man to get through. Mm -hmm. And somebody says she's playing hard to get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, <laughs> mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. Well, let me make a disclaimer up front. Mm -hmm. That I'm not a follower or a promoter of certain kinds of music. All right. I'm making that disclaimer up front. Mm -hmm. However... There's a song where this man checks for this woman. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to me? Yes, we are. A man who is in love with a woman. But this woman, listen to the language, this woman switch upon him hmm. for another man. All right. Hmm. Because she loves the millions, the millions. Hmm. And so she fell for the money man. Hmm. Oh, mercy, Lord. But he anticipated that even though he may not be as rich as the money man now, that things will work out for him eventually. All right, later. Uh -huh. And so he says to her, if you can't love me now, hmm. don't love me later. Hmm. When my later is much greater. Yes, man. It only proves she loves the paper, hmm. my paper. Hmm. We're following you, we're following if you. If you can't love me now, don't love me later. Mm -hmm. When my later is much greater. Hmm. Camino, <laughs> one no impersonator hmm. for my paper. No. <laughs> Mercy. Easy well, enough. easy now. I want to talk spiritual things tonight. All right. And tonight, Jesus Christ is in love with you. Amen. And he wants you to love him in return. Amen. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't want you to love him later. All right. But he wants you to demonstrate your love for him Right now. Amen. Amen. Tonight. Tonight. Hmm. Because if you can't love him now, hmm. don't love him later. Because you might just be loving him for his paper, hmm. his paper. Mercy. Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Following your preacher. And so the love of God is manifested in the word of God. Mm -hmm. The Bible decrees and declares, surely speaking of Christ. He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded oh, for sir, our transgressions. transgressions. Yes, sir. He was bruised for our iniquities. Mm -hmm. The chastisement of our peace was oh, upon yeah. him. Yeah. Hallelujah. And with his stripes, we are healed. He amen. Amen. Oh, glory to God. So now I say amazing love. Hmm. How can it be hmm. that thou, my God, shalt die for me. for me? Amen. God wants you to love him in return. And don't wait until later. Because later may not be yours. True. In fact, too late, too late shall be the cry. True. God loves you. 
And his love for you calls for your acceptance and response to his love in return. And it must not be later, but it must be now. It must be when? Now. For the Bible says, come, God says, come now. Let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, mm -hmm. they shall be white as, as white as snow. Amen. And though they be red like crimson, mm -hmm. they, they shall, shall be, be as, wool. as wool. Amen. But it says to you, come right now. now. Amen. My friends, love is a splendid thing. Oh, yeah. If you've ever been in love, Pastor Paul, you mm -hmm. know that love is an awesome thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And my friends, when you have made a decision to accept the love of another, to accept their hand in marriage, it's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. All right. And I want to share with you tonight, while we speak on love, 10 commandments for a successful love life. All right. Those of you who are married, you will benefit from it. Hmm. And your loving will be greater. All right. What more than paper? Hmm. <laughs> and for those of you who are still single and like to mingle, hmm. it will prepare you for your time. Hmm. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to share with you these ten commandments for a successful love life. Take it from somebody who understands what it's about. All right, go on, go on. So let's go. Number one. You shall make your spouse your priority. I want everyone to read it. Read it like you're in love or you're about to be in love. If you know what I mean. So All let's right. go for it. What is number one? You shall make your spouse your priority. You shall make your spouse your priority priority. Mm -hmm. If you want to have a successful marriage in time to come or in present, I want to submit to you today that you must make your husband or your wife your number one, mm -hmm. your priority. All right. Nothing and no one must be above your husband or your wife. Am I right or am I just right? Just right. Commandment number two for a successful love life. You shall not make your spouse feel reviled by another or anything. Uh-huh. So your spouse must not feel rivaled by anyone else. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Your husband must not feel rivaled by another man. Hmm. And your wife must not feel rivaled by another woman. Hmm. You must give your wife, your husband, a sense of security. All right. Following you? Uh-huh. And if you have a lady, Pastor Max must treat her like a lady. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Because you Stop can it. make a good girl go crazy mm -hmm. if you don't treat her like a lady. Mercy. The third point, the third commandment for a successful love life. What, everybody? You shall not take your spouse for granted. You must not take your spouse for granted. You know, sometimes when you become familiar with somebody, you take the person for granted. True. You treat other people who do not even care about you with respect. You go on the bus and you have manners for people who don't care one bit about you. Mm -hmm. At the workplace, you're respectful and courteous with people who couldn't care less about you. But because you're familiar with your person at home, you take that person for granted. Mm -hmm. True. Mm -hmm. But you must not take your spouse for granted. Treat her like a queen. Treat him like a king. Yes, sir. Because let me tell you a secret. Hmm. If you take care of her at, from seven, Come on now, come on now, we're following you. By 11, she'll take you to heaven. Hmm. Oh, don't play innocent tonight. <laughs> mercy, mercy, <laughs> mercy. <laughs> number four, number four, what does it say? You shall remember to make time for your spouse. Remember to make time for your spouse. Mm -hmm. Time in marriage 
is worth more than paper. True. Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. And so give quality time. There's a song that says, make time for love. Mm. By the time we get to the fifth commandment for a successful love life, it says what, everybody? You must respect, affirm, and appreciate your spouse. And I want everybody to read, you must respect, affirm, and appreciate your spouse. Treat your husband, your wife with respect. Give affirmation rather than be quick to give condemnation. Sure. Uh, because to just give condemnation, then you become a toxic husband or a toxic wife. And no one wants to be around a toxic person for too long. Mm, true. Uh, commandment number six. For a successful marriage, what does it say, everybody? You shall not hurt your spouse physically or emotionally. Don't hurt your spouse physically or emotionally. I don't have all the time in the world, but what I want to say tonight is that any man who hits his wife is not a man. Hmm. Is a maniku. True. Yes, man. Mm -hmm. You can see that again. Mm -hmm. A mackerel man. <laughs> Mercy. Hmm. Number seven, commandment number seven. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. Be faithful to your husband. Be faithful to your wife. Leave other people business mm -hmm. alone. All right. You know not hear what I'm saying. Listening, you man. Mind your own business. Mm -hmm. You know not hear what I'm saying. Number eight. Number eight, everybody. You shall not rob your spouse of his or her marital rights and privileges. This is important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pastor Max said, work that one. Yes, man. <laughs> and I know Colin Sheen for it to work that one. <laughs> Mercy. So let me work that one. Now, the Bible says that a man's body belongs to his wife. Hmm. And the wife's body belongs to her husband. husband. And because of this, the Bible says, do not rob each other. Do not defraud each other. In other words, run the thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, yes. <laughs> You're not hearing the preacher. Yes, man. Hmm. The whole run the thing because, because when your wife says, man, I'm ready. You must say, girl, like Freddy. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. And when the husband says, girl, I'm ready, you must say, boy, like Frederica. Hmm. Do not rob each other sexually, the Bible says. Mm -hmm. So, a word to the wise is sufficient. Amen, amen. Remember, run the thing. Pastor Scott says so. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. <laughs> Number nine. You Number nine. You shall love your spouse in practice and not just in words. Love your spouse in practice and not just in words. It's not enough to say, I love you. Your action must demonstrate love. Remember what I told you last night? If you want to know who I love, you find out who I gave. Mm -hmm. And if you want to know who I gave, you find out who I love. True. Because it's not just words, but it's also action. And then number 10, the 10th commandment for a successful marriage, what everybody? You shall be contented with and appreciative of the spouse and the blessings God has given to you. Be satisfied. Mm -hmm. Be contented. Don't have long eyes. Mm -hmm. Don't think that the grass on the other side is greener. No, you must water the grass where you are. Mm -hmm. Anybody in the house? Yes, man, right here. And these ten commandments, if you follow them right... You will have a happy and successful marriage. Somebody say amen. Amen. I want to say this, church. We're talking about love. Tonight is a love night. Because we're going to vote for the one we love. Mm -hmm. Not so we do it in elections. Yes. We vote the party we love. Mm -hmm. 
and we're going to vote the one we love. And I want to submit to us tonight that a marriage is a reflection of the love relationship between Christ and his church. True. Amen. All right. Christ and those who are saved. In the book of Ephesians, our first text for tonight, Ephesians chapter 5, we begin at verse 25. I want you all to read aloud and together with the reader. Ephesians 5, beginning at verse 25, let's shout it out in Jesus' name. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So husbands must love wives as Christ loved the church. So there's a spiritual application. Verse 31 right on to 32. Let's read in concert, everybody. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Go on. This is a great mystery. What is he speaking of? But I speak concerning, concerning Christ, Christ and the church. And the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she is reverence her husband. Uh-huh. So, my friends, a husband-wife relationship is marked by love. And the relationship that Christ wants to have with you is a love relationship. So, he likens it to marriage. Mm -hmm. So, in Jeremiah 31, the third verse, the Bible says that the Lord had appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I, I have loved thee with, with an everlasting love. love. Therefore, with, with loving, loving kindness, kindness have I drawn thee. thee. And I want to say that a love like this is hard to resist. Sure. Mm -hmm. And so, my friends, in 1 John 4, 19, the Bible shows us the sequence. You see, God is not counting on you to love him for no reason at all. He has given the premise on which you must love him. He treats you with love and care. And he wants you to love him in return. Amen. So the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4 verse 19, everybody reading, what does the Bible say? We love him. Why? Because he first loved us. So we do not love him first, but God loves us first. Amen. And in response to a love like this that is hard to resist, we can't help but to love him in return. Amen, amen. It reminds me of a man who was talking about how he and his wife met. You see, love, there is that return. You give love, and naturally it comes back. Generally, that's how it should be. Mm -hmm. And so, he explains how he and his wife met. He said, he went to a party and he saw a lady and she liked him. All right. So he liked her back. All right. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Amidst the humor, the point is that love begets love. Mm -hmm. We love him because he, he first, first loved us. Loved us. Mm -hmm. My friends, God wants you to love him in return. And he's setting his card on the table, giving his expectations for that love relationship with you. It's just like marriage. You don't get, just get married, but you give your expectations. You let your husband-to-be know what you expect in the marriage. Mm -hmm. You let your wife-to-be know what you expect in the marriage. And so Jesus Christ is about to put his card on the table and to let you know his expectation in the love relationship with him. So that he is not disappointed in this marriage, in this love relationship. And Jesus Christ has ten expectations of us. True. How many right. did I say? Ten. Ten expectations of you in your love relationship with him. All right. That these expectations are so strong that the Bible doesn't call them ten suggestions. Hmm. Talk to us. But talk the to Bible us. calls them ten commandments. Amen. Amen. 
And these Ten Commandments are God's expectations of you in your love relationship with him. You know when it comes to him and his love, you can count on it. But when it comes to you, he gives some expectations that you must fulfill in this love relationship. Amen. All right. These are found in the book of Exodus. What book did I say? Exodus. Chapter 20, mm -hmm. beginning at the third verse. Ten ways to demonstrate your love for God in your relationship with him. Let's go for it. The first one is found in the third verse. They're called the Ten Commandments. Ten ways to demonstrate love for God. What's the first of these commandments? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. God is saying, hmm. in the love relationship between you and him, he loves you with an everlasting love. Yes. Everything you need, he supplies to you. You do not lack when you have him. Hmm. Because he is a rich husband. All right, all right. Who That's is it. able to mm -hmm. supply, not some. But all. You know, there are wives who have husbands that, Lord mm. have mercy, let me not go there. All right, all but right. Easy but he is able to supply all of your needs. Amen. According to his riches and glory amen. by Christ Jesus. Amen, amen. And what he says to you is that you must have no other gods before me. I must be your number one. Amen. That's the above point. Above and before everything else. Amen. And in that way, you are demonstrating your love for God. Does it make sense to you? Amen. Yes, sir. Just as the husband and wife must give priority to each other. Let's go to commandment number two. That shows us how to demonstrate love for God in our relationship with him. You see, the Ten Commandments are not ten burdens. The Ten Commandments are ten ways to express love for God. Amen, that's true. It's that's about true. love. So let's go to the second commandment from thou, verse 4 thou, to 6. Thou shalt not make unto thee any grieving image. Let's read aloud, everybody. Or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a, I'm a jealous, jealous God. God. Let's pause for a cause. You see, any husband who is crazy over his wife, mm -hmm. or any wife who is crazy over her husband, All right. when there appears to be a threat, by somebody else. Mm. Lord have mercy. Talk to us. Talk to us. There is a sense of jealousy. Mercy. Good jealousy mm. if you please. All right. And God is so much crazy over you. Yeah. That when anything or anyone threatens his place in your life. Hmm. He says I am a jealous, jealous God. God. Amen. I want to be your number one. Hmm. Your one and only. Amen. I don't want to have to compete with your cell phone. Hmm. <laughs> with your vehicle. Mm -hmm. With your house. Yes. With your money. Yes. With your job. Mm -hmm. With your friends. I must be your one and only. Amen. Amen. That's love. Yes, man. That's real love. And so, my friends, let's take it again, Rita. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Uh -huh. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Watch verse 6. That's powerful now. And, verse 6. And showing mercy unto thousands of them Watch that this. love me and keep my commandments. Do you see the love in it? Oh, yes. Real love. The premise on which we keep the commandments of God is love. Amen. The text says, and showing mercy, mercy unto, thousands unto thousands of them, of them that love that me, love me and, and keep my, my commandments. commandments. It's about love. Amen. And when you're in love with God, you have to bound to must keep his commandments. Amen. Because there are ten ways to express and demonstrate your love for God. Amen. 
showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Amen. It's about love. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. By the time we get to the third commandment that demonstrates love for God, what does the Bible say there? Verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember, it's a love thing. So just as... Now, could we talk for reals? Yes, man. Talk to us. Now, husband or wife. Now, you don't want anybody, I say anybody, calling up your husband or your wife's name in the puppy show. All right. All huh? right. We're following you. When they do that, when they disrespect, huh, you feel to deal with them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They, they, they may call other people's name in the puppy show. Mm -hmm. But not your wife. Yeah. Not your husband. Because they put you on another side hmm. when they do that. Am I right or am I just right? Both of them. <laughs> and so, my friends, what God is saying to you is that when you are in love with him, you will not take his name in vain. True. You know, my wife carries the name Scott. Hmm. All right. I mean, she has to carry that with some dignity. respect. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. With some dignity. Oh, yeah. That's the word. Huh? Mm -hmm. She has to operate in a, in a, in a Scottish way. Oh, yes. <laughs> if, you, if you know what I'm saying. Yes, man. Mm -hmm. And so when you accept Christ in your life and you're in love with the Lord, mm -hmm. my friends, because you carry his name, mm -hmm. you walk differently. Yes, man. You talk differently. Yes, uh -huh. You live differently. On, go on, you man. think go on, differently. Uh -huh. You dress uh -huh. differently yeah. because you are a child of the king. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Christian, man. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yes, man. Glory to God. Then, the fourth way, the fourth commandment that demonstrates your love for God. Verse 8, right on to verse 11. What does the Bible say, everybody? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Yes, sir. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, Thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Everybody read verse 11. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So this fourth commandment that demonstrates your love for God is about love. The Sabbath commandment is not a burden. No. When you are in love with God, keeping the seven-day Sabbath, the seventh day of each week as a Sabbath Saturday, my friends, it becomes a joy. Amen. You mm. see, the Sabbath is really a date that you have with God. True. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm talking about love. Yes, man. When you love with somebody... You have dead time. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. When you meet and you speak sweet nothings, hmm. as this is a Finley raise up her shoulder like she's ready to listen. Mercy. Huh? When you speak sweet nothings to each other, hmm. I'm talking about unmolested time where you put away the cell phone and you just give attention to each other. Mm -hmm. Huh? You see yourself in her eyes. Oh, yes. Oh, my good. That feels nice. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, Pastor. Lord, have mercy. I'm talking about love. Hmm. Unmolested time. And my friends, that is what the Sabbath is about. Mm -hmm. The Sabbath is every seventh day. You've been busy all week long. Hmm. Sunday to Friday. You have to work because you have to eat our food. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Huh? But on the seventh day, this is between you and God. True. And God says to you, just the two of us. Yes, man. Yes, man. Huh? Amen. You're not hearing what I'm saying. Amen. Amen. And when the sun sets Friday evening to Saturday evening, it's just you and God honeymoon style, if Amen. you please. Amen. Amen. Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. 
And, and, and the Sabbath is that day to relax with God. And, and the, when you're on a date with your spouse, whether it be your wife or your wife to be or your husband to be or your husband, you just speak and let them, you just honor them. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're so lovely. Mm-hmm. You're so handsome. Oh, I, I, I'm so blessed to have you in my life. Oh, yes. And every Sabbath day, that is what we do. We come into the house of God. We come to his place. Amen. You know when you used to visit the one you love? Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. Come by the home, the home? You come by God's home, by God's house. And you just say, Lord, you're so sweet. Amen. Lord, you're so awesome. Amen. Lord, you're so great. Lord, I'm so much in love with you. I'm so happy to have you in my life. And every Sabbath day, we come into the church of God and we just adore and worship the one we love. We Amen. just worship him, letting him know how much we love and adore him and how blessed we are to have him in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory. Every Sabbath day, God says to you, I love you. Hmm. You say to God, I love you too. Hmm. And God says to you, well, I love you more. All right. And you say to God, you begin to blush pink and you say, God, stop it. <laughs> Mercy. You, you just saying that because it's true. <laughs> My friends, that is what a Sabbath is about. Oh, yes, yes. The Sabbath is about your love relationship with God. Amen. It's not a burden. It's a joy. Amen. You see, when you don't love God, that's when it's a burden. True, true. <laughs> I know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Because back in the days, you know, let me be careful what I'm saying. <laughs> hmm. you, know, you know, when you're in love with somebody, and when you're not love, in love with somebody, that's two different things. Yeah. When you're not in love with somebody, and he calling or he she calling, it's annoying. Mm-hmm. What are you calling me for? Go ahead, go ahead, we follow you. But go. when you're in love with a person, the same phone rings mm-hmm. and you run into it helter skelter. Yes, man. Knocking on everything in the house. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And everybody around you in the house, and you're talking clearly, but no one else can hear. Mm-hmm. Intimacy. Hmm. Yes, I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> you're not hearing what I'm saying. Yes, man. You're going good, man. I'm going saying good. that is what the Sabbath is about. Mm hmm. Noise is all around you. Soccer all around you. People in the marketplace doing their thing, but God hears you. Amen. And you hear God. Oh, yes. My friends, the Sabbath is a joy. Amen. I love every Sabbath. Sabbath. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And this joy can be yours tonight. Somebody say amen. Amen. Let me take you now to the let me take you now to the fifth way. We demonstrate our love for God. It's the fifth commandment. And the last sixth commandment demonstrates our love not only for God, but also for our fellow men. Amen. Our fellow men were made in the image of God. True. And so by loving our fellow men, we demonstrate love for the God who made and created them. Am I making sense? Amen, amen. Yeah, definitely. You see, don't tell me you love God and you treat me like a dog. Hmm. Following you. And so, the Bible tells us the last six commandments demonstrate love for God, but also love for our fellow men. It's about love. Let's go verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Uh huh. When you're in love with God, the parents he has blessed you with, you will love them and honor them. Amen. Now, when someone you love gives you something, you cherish that something. Oh, yes. Definitely. Am I correct? Yes. It doesn't matter the price or the cost. Whether it costs paper, hmm. <laughs> Lord have mercy, or it costs metal, hmm. once it's somebody who you love, you cherish yes. that gift. Hmm. Am I correct? True, true. And so too tonight. God has blessed you with your parents and you love and cherish them. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Then, the sixth way, 
to demonstrate love for God. What is it, everybody? Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. God created our fellow men. These are our brothers and sisters. And when you love God, you will love the people that were created by God. Amen. Huh? Mm -hmm. When your wife makes something, your husband makes something, you cherish it. Am I correct? True. And God has created our fellow men, and so we love them by preserving their life and not taking their life. Are we making sense tonight? Amen, amen. Number seven. Let's go for it. Number seven. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. Remember, whatever the person you love it gives to you, you cherish. So God has blessed you with a spouse, a husband, a wife. You love and you cherish that person. Amen. And be faithful to that person and not commit adultery. Amen. Let's hear some on. Let's go to the next. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. When you love people, you don't take from them, but you give to them. Amen. Am I correct? Yes. Let's go number nine. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. When you love others, you don't spread lies and rumors about them. True. And you don't hide the truth in order to make somebody you love look bad. Hmm. And finally, the final way to demonstrate your love for God. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass. Nor anything, anything that is thy that neighbor. That is thy neighbor's. And my friends, in these ways, we demonstrate love for God. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. Is that clear tonight? Yes. Is that clear tonight? Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible says on these two, hang all the law and the prophets. Hmm. Love for God and love for a fellow men. Love doesn't contradict the word of God, but love helps us to follow the word of God. Amen. The entire Bible they are hinge, it is hinge on these two. Love for God and love for our fellow man. Amen. My friends, that's why the Bible says to love God with everything you have. And love your neighbor as yourself. I want to take you to Romans chapter 13 verses 8 to 10. And I want you to see clearly that the Bible is showing us that love for him and love for others are they're demonstrated in obeying the commandments. We'll see the connection right about this time. Let's read everybody. What does it say? Oh, no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. So when we love, we establish the law. Amen. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Go on. What does the law contain? For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Where do we find that? In the Ten, Ten Commandments, commandments. Yes. the Ten Ways to Demonstrate Love for God. Mm -hmm. What else does it say? Thou shalt not kill. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not be a false witness. Thou no. shalt not covet. Thou and if there, there be, be any, any other, that's the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. what happens? It, it is, is briefly comprehended in, in this saying, namely, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. As thyself. Love worketh okay, no, no ill, ill to, to his, his neighbor. neighbor. Therefore, love, love is the, the fulfilling of the, law. of the law. Amen. And so when you love your fellow man, and when you love God, they're demonstrated on obedience to the commandments of God. And I think the message is crystal clear tonight. Somebody say amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. And so just to recap. This is how we demonstrate love. By worshiping God alone. By not bowing down before images. By respecting his name. By spending unmolested time with him every Sabbath day. By respecting and honoring our parents. By, by not killing but preserving life. By not committing adultery but being faithful to your spouse. By not stealing. By not telling lies. By not coveting the blessings of others. Mm -hmm. And we demonstrate love
for God and our fellow men in these 10 practical ways. Amen. So don't let anybody tell you, you don't have to obey. You just have to love. Hmm. Because love is practical. True. And it is demonstrated in a life of obedience to God. Amen. You cannot say you love someone and you kill them, hmm. steal from them. No. You cannot say you love God and you're not willing to spend the time with him, on molested time with him on the seventh day as he has prescribed to you. True. And so this is very, very important for us to get tonight. Amen. And so, you know, there's a text that says, a new commandment I give unto you. You know that text? Yes. That, that you love one another mm -hmm. as I have loved you, and that you also love one another. Mm -hmm. You see, this commandment is not new in terms of timing. No, no. Mm -hmm. But it's really a commandment that is new in terms of renewal. Mm -hmm. Renewed emphasis. Because immediately, the, the Bible says, brethren, I write, the Bible says, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which he had from the beginning. Yes. The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. So the Bible is not contradicting itself. The old commandment remains, but there's a new emphasis today. Let me illustrate. Now, back in the day, I, I used to roll with a fro. Hmm. All right. <laughs> An <there>. afro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you, no, you know, back in the days, afro was in style. Yes. But after some years... It came back in style. Hmm. It's not a new style. It's an old style. Mm -hmm. But for persons in a younger generation, it's new. True. Are you True. following what I'm saying? Yes, we're following you. Remember the, the bell button pants? Mm -hmm. Way back in times, it was in style. But there was a point in the not too long ago where it came back in style. Yeah, yeah, big foot pants. Yes, man. Mm -hmm. Is somebody with me? Mm -hmm. So there's a renewed emphasis. So that's why the Bible is saying, no new commandment I give to you. But then it also says the new commandment, there's an emphasis, and the emphasis is love. But it was always God's will for us to demonstrate obedience in love. That's why the commandment itself says, showing mercy unto thousands that love me, and keep, keep my, my commandments. commandments. Amen. In the Old Testament, the Bible says to us to love God with everything you have, Deuteronomy. Yes. And in Leviticus, it says to love your neighbor as, as yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm coming home now. All right. I'm coming home. Tonight, tonight, as the music plays softly, God, God loves you. And his love for you calls for a response. And this response is demonstrated in obedience to the Ten Commandments. Amen. This response is to be demonstrated not later, but it should be demonstrated now. When did I say? Now, now tonight. Now. Now. Because Jesus is saying to somebody, if you can't love me now hmm. for everything I've done for you, later might be too late. Uh -huh. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 6 2, for he said, I've heard thee in, the time in a time accepted, mm -hmm. and in the day of salvation have I, have I helped thee. Mm -hmm. Behold, now is the accepted, is the accepted time. Mm -hmm. Behold, now is the day, is the day of, of salvation. salvation. Amen. While it is said today, the Bible says, if you will hear his voice, mm -hmm. harden not, not your heart. Your heart. If you wait for later, too late, too late, shall be a cry. may be the cry. Mm. In Ecclesiastes 12 verse 1, the Bible says to young people tonight, remember Amen. now the thy creator in the days of thy youth. The, of thy youth. Mm -hmm. the time for you to demonstrate your love to God 
is now, Amen. not later. So the Bible says in verse 13 and 14, let us hear yeah, the, conclusion the conclusion of the whole matter. Of the whole matter. Fear, Fear God, God and, and keep, keep his, command his commandments. For this, this is, is the, the whole duty, duty of man. man. If you love him, this is your duty Amen. to keep his commandments. Now, not later. For God will bring every, every work, work into, judgment. into judgment with every, every secret, secret thing, thing whether, whether it be, be good, good or whether, or it, be whether it be evil. Amen. I leave you four points from tonight's message. Four solemn points. Number one, Jesus loves you so much that he gave his life to save you from sin. Somebody say amen. Amen. The second takeaway from tonight's message, the appropriate response to the love of Jesus for you is to love him in return. Amen. My third point from tonight's message, a true, real, and practical demonstration of our love for God is shown by obedience to each of the Ten Commandments of God. Amen. And my final point from tonight's message. The time to demonstrate that love is now, not later. Amen. Because if you can't love him now, later may be too late. And so tonight, the few questions that you must respond to do you appreciate the love of Jesus for you demonstrated by dying on the cross? If you appreciate his love for you, I want to shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Tonight, do you love him in return? If you love him in return, somebody say amen. Amen. Finally, do you wish to demonstrate your love for him now through a life of obedience to his words? If that is your desire, to show your love for him now, not later, I wanted to raise your hand wherever you are. Oh, God bless you. God bless you tonight. Tonight, every one of you should have your voting card and your pencil. I want you to take your voting card and pencil in hand right now. And begin to write. You have written your hand. Make sure your name is written there. Do that now. Make sure your address is written there. Members and visitors alike. It's the election time. This is your voting card. Make sure it's written there. Your phone number should be written there. Your age range should be written there. You tick SDA, non-SDA or former SDA. You fill out your voting card now. You're doing it for Jesus Christ. You are casting your ballot at this time. Here's where we put our tick. Firstly, it says, I vote for Jesus to have rule over my life. If that is your vote for Jesus to have rule over your life, I want you to put your tick right there. You can put your X right there. You can put your mark right there. I vote for Jesus to rule over my life this very night. Then next, I desire to follow his rulership by keeping all of his Ten Commandments, including the seventh day sabbath it's a day of love if that is your desire put your x your tick your mark right there put it there put it there as a demonstration of your love for him and finally finally i desire to follow god's rulership by being baptized as jesus did we have seen last night that Jesus was baptized 
The Bible says in Matthew 3, 16, And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw God's Spirit descending like a dove and light upon him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Amen. When you are baptized, even this Sabbath, God will be pleased with you. Amen. In Mark 16, verse 16, Jesus says, He that believeth and is baptized, and is baptized shall be saved. Shall be saved. Amen. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Shall be Our last text says, Matthew 28, verse 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations like we are doing tonight, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Put your tick there. Put your X there. I decide to follow his rulership by being baptized as Jesus did. Here's about the eyes of close. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word tonight that went out so clearly. Helping us to understand that the time to demonstrate our love for you is now. We have demonstrated it in the filling out of the voting card. We have said yes to you. And we pray, God, that even tonight as we offer this prayer, having said yes to you, that you will grant us your salvation and redemption. Save us for your kingdom to reign with you eternally when Jesus returns. Father, bring back your people out here tomorrow night, which will be a special night or a prayer night. Whatever the needs may be, we will bring them before the Lord in prayer tomorrow night. And we receive another powerful message. Newborn babies in big man clothes. Bring us out here for this powerful word. And for our result night, accept our prayer. And grant us your blessings as we dismiss. We ask these favors in the name of Jesus Christ. All of God's people say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow night with your friends, with your loved ones, with your family members. In case you miss filling, putting a card in the bowl, you can bring them up tonight as you leave. God bless you in Jesus' name.